Thane, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing excellent, Tyler. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I know this was a little last second for you, but thank you so much for being available for the call. Sure, no worries. Uh, Thane is a full-time real estate investor, uh, not a realtor, not a mortgage broker, but an investor. Um, and he does a lot with rent to own. Actually, um, maybe just give a, a brief intro about yourself. Do you want to go over that deal you're working on in Vernon right now? Um, yeah, sure. I've uh, been in full time real estate investor the last uh, two years full time. Prior to that, uh, full time consultant. So, I've been working for myself for probably about five, six years now. Uh, we uh, do have a nice, interesting property I'm working on. One of the exit strategies definitely is with rent to own. We uh, purchased an apartment building and then switched over to a, a condominium development. And we sold all 14 units out to individual investors with who we've uh, joint ventured with. So no money out of our own pocket through that whole, whole deal all the way through. And then one of the exit strategies is to put together uh, – to meet with the existing renters in the building and see if they wanted to do a rent-to-own uh, strategy because it actually uh, they're able to rent their place for about $100 less than they're paying right now for rent. So it's actually a win-win for, for everyone. So we have a nice little project out in Vernon that we're, we're working with, and uh, rent-to-own is one of the ways we do it. Sure. And uh, maybe um, even give a little bit of uh, information on the back end. As a real estate investor, how much money are you guys looking to make off these deals? Interesting question. <laughs> uh, because I partner, we're partnered with our individual investors. Uh, let's just say to purchase a building or to purchase anything as an investor, you have to put down a minimum 20%. And if you're doing a commercial deal, you have to put down 35%. So let's just say we're paying the entire down payment. So the 20% down for each of the, the joint venture partners we're working with in that deal. So we're making, we're doing okay. Uh, our investors are getting great deals because they're coming in for a joint venture with us for zero money out of their pocket or very little, like two or three, four thousand dollars maximum. And we're all going to be making our exit strategies to uh, to either refinance in five years or to sell outright in five years. And we're projecting about sixty thousand in profit split, fifty fifty. With you and an, with you and the investor. Correct. Yes. And then how over how many units? Oh, uh, that's times fourteen for us. So not a bad deal. So about sixty grand split between you and the investor, uh, over fourteen units. Times fourteen. Yeah. And then how many years is that? That's uh, we're estimating about five years for that. That's at a three percent growth rate. Very modest, conservative numbers. The the tenants are going to be Vernon's got about a five percent vacancy rate, so we're projecting uh, the units will all be filled over that time, at least ninety five percent of the time. We've got uh, a rental pool, rental warranty in place for the investor partners, so they'll always at least be making um, a set amount each month. So it's we've taken away a lot of the risk for the partners as well as ourselves, and it's a pretty good deal. We bought it at a bought it at a good price and uh, sold it at a we're selling it at a very good price. We're holding holding a large chunk of it, so it's a good deal for everyone. And then the whole time you're going to be gaining cash flow on that as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We got uh, each unit uh, spits out about $124 in cash, net cash flow. Yeah. And we're probably and that's per month. Sorry, what was that? We're giving, and we're giving most of that to the investor. It depends on the, the partner. Some people, we're, we're splitting it 50-50. Some people are getting the whole amount just to make the deal work. And that's per month, right? That's per month, correct, per unit. Awesome. All right, so now that we've talked kind of what, you know, there there's a rough idea. Like a lot of people don't do apartment buildings um, quite like this. Basically what Thane did was he found an apartment building that uh, someone owned the whole building. And uh, his strategy was to um, basically sell them off individually and control the whole building that way as opposed to take on, on the whole building on, on his own. And the way he did that was through rent to own. Most people don't do it like that. Usually they'll find maybe a townhouse or a house or a condo and they'll do a rent to own that way. Um, that was just kind of, uh, I just wanted Thane to give you guys an example so you could see how rent to own could work on a much bigger scale or a much bigger level. And basically, like Thane's doing 14 deals at once. Uh, how long did it take you to set up that deal? We started last summer, so about eight months now. About eight months. Um, yep. Yeah, so eight months to do about 14 deals, which really isn't too bad if that's a model that you like and you can work with. 
Um, so let's start explaining uh, what, what Rent-to-Own is and how it works, especially in Canada. So do you want to give a, a brief overview of how you set up a Rent-to-Own deal? I could. Um, uh, let me see, just a classic one. I think you have the, one of the examples of one we were doing last summer. I do. Actually, I have. Um, I'll, I'll show everyone this later. Um, a one we were looking at in Surrey, actually. Uh, three bedroom plus den townhouse. Um, we'll go over the numbers and how everything was was signed up. And basically, this was an investor presentation. But what it does is it really breaks down the numbers for you, so you can kind of see how this would lay out as an investor. In here, we did it. Uh, I think we gave them a fifty fifty split or something, didn't we? Uh, yes. Yeah. Fifty percent of profits, and we gave them a hundred percent of cash flow. So, but uh, basically, we lay out here in two years, um, yeah, just uh, how the deal was all laid out. Um, yeah, rent is very, very profitable. You can do what are called sandwich leases, where there's none of your own money out. You just find a good deal, find a good partner, you match the two, and then you just come in in the middle to just make a nice little profit bump. Or you can find a good deal out there that maybe the uh, seller wants has a lot of equity and wants like full price, even though you know it's a reasonably good deal and it'll go up over time. So you can make a deal with them and then find a rent-to-own tenant for it and then just uh, uh, find an investor to package it up. So there's, there's so many different variations with rent-to-own, so you kind of have to go through them all specifically on a deal-by-deal -deal basis. But there's a, it's a great way to maximize your cash flow and minimize your risk um, and make sure you have a guaranteed buyer after two, between two years and five years. So rent to is definitely one very good way to do uh, to do investing. Very cool. Um, so talk about like what is how you know a lot of people they they buy investment properties and they want to rent them out. What makes rent to own um, in your in your particular viewpoint more lucrative than just buying and renting and holding? Um, it's not. It's different. It's a it's a different deal. It's not necessarily more lucrative. What happens is, say you have, I'll give an example from Vancouver. You have a three hundred thousand dollar condo downtown, one bedroom. So you want you want to buy and hold it and rent it. So you rent it out for a thousand dollars. You make maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars if you're lucky, or it's negative cash flow, a hundred, two hundred dollars. So. If you're lucky, you're renting out something positive cash flow. You hold it for 5, 10, 15 years, 20 years. Within 17 years, it's paid off. That's a good thing. So over the long term, you definitely want to buy and hold. You want to buy and hold. You don't make as much uh, short-term cash, but over time, you'll make more money buying and holding. So in the long term, you want to buy and hold. But sometimes people want to make larger chunks of money and guaranteed money because you'll never know. you never know what's going to happen to the real estate market. It could actually go down. So uh, the, in comparison, so you have a $300,000 condo in, say, downtown Vancouver at one bedroom, and you find a buyer who actually, or you, you find a good deal. So you, tie, you have a, uh, either your condo or you've tied up a condo at that price. So you know it's a fairly good value for someone to purchase it. So what you do is you, if you just want to rent it on and be out of it and within, say, two years to five years, you find someone to come in who agrees to buy it for you. And so Vancouver is interesting because over the last 50 years, Vancouver prices have gone up 9%. So it's kind of, no matter what you do in downtown Vancouver, you're going to make like 9% return. So what you do is you find someone who wants to buy that condo from you and maybe doesn't have the down payment right now because they're going to need 5, 10, 15%, whatever, whatever needed for a down payment. But they may not have it, but they'll have it in a couple of years. And their credit may not be the greatest, but maybe their credit's going to be better in two or three or five years. And or they're a small business owner, and their business is improving, but they just don't have a great credit in order to purchase it themselves. So you make a deal with them to – so your $300,000 condo, you sell it to them in, say, three years for 320 So it's not 9%, 9%, 9%. It's 20% um, over a set period of time, but it's a fair value. And then you say, in comparison, most other properties are going to be worth this at that time. So you're getting a good value. Give them a good deal. But you, you're guaranteeing yourself $20,000 profit no matter what. So the next step is to find you agree on what they're going to rent it out at. So maybe if, I can, maybe if I can stop you right there and just dive a little bit deeper. Um, one thing yeah. I really want to point out is what Thane said. Like You don't know what's going to happen with the real estate market. And so when you have a rent-to-own tenant come in um, and say you have the property, it's worth 250000 
you know, um, say CMHC is projecting it's going to increase like, you know, 